Hey there, everyone. Thanks again for tuning in to Sims Workshop. Hope you're having a wonderful day. All right, so today I'm really excited. We're going to be talking about the initial insult by Minnie McGinnis. So I got this book, uh, you probably saw, in my February unboxing video of the Bookish Box. So it came okay with two covers. So you have your custom Bookish Box cover, and it's a reversible dust jacket. Ta-da! This is what it looks like when you go to the bookstore. The initial insult. Lots of elements from the book are represented on this cover. You've got the brick. You've got the shadow of the cat right there. And yeah, I mean, this is a good book. I really loved it. You can already see where this review is going, I guess. And I'll tell you why I loved it. So when I read the synopsis, I was like, huh, this is really interesting because it really does draw a lot of inspiration from Edgar Allan Poe. You definitely see, you know, the house of the fall, the house of Usher, um, Annabelle, uh, the black cat, pit in the pendulum. Oh God, I could go on and on. I really could. There were so many references. The title itself, the initial insult, I forget which story. I have the whole collection of Edgar Allan Poe's work um, upstairs. So I know when I look at it, I'll be able to say, oh yeah, there it is. Every little aspect of this story is represented, is inspired, rather, by Edgar Allan Poe. And I am a huge Poe fan. I do love Poe. Um, which is funny because in middle school I didn't. I didn't think I really started appreciating Poe until um, high school. <laughs> and then you also have this nice interior artwork. I'm just showcasing a lot of these little tidbits. So I have to say I really did. I love this book. So it follows, you know, two best friends. Oh, God, so good. Such a good book. Felicity and Tress. And Tress hasn't really had a great life um, when she was a kid. Uh, Felicity, Felicity and her were best friends. And when she was a kid, she, Felicity, you know, her parents were fighting. And she ran over to her best friend Tress's house. And then in the middle of the night, she wanted to come home. So, Tressa's parents take, take her home, and something happens. We don't know what. We still don't know what. You're reading this whole story. You know, I was really, that's, there's so many elements to the story. You just make it so good. But let's, I'm trying to stay on track, but it's really hard not to fangirl. <laughs> um, like I was saying. So, you don't really know what happens to trust his parents. You know that Felicity, she's found on the side of the road and nothing but her nightgown. That's it. And they live in this, you know, small little town where even if you're broke, if your name is attached to old money, like trust, you know, her name, uh, she's an usher, I believe. She's part of the ushers, you know, follow the house of usher. Um, their name, even if they're broke, it, it has clout. It inspires some sort of respect. Unfortunately for Tress, she was uh, adopted by, or taken taken in by her grandfather Cecil, who really couldn't give a crap about her. He's like, you know, I just go to school, do whatever, I don't care, just don't talk, <laughs> pretty much. And they live in a trailer behind a zoo that he has, and I think that that's really interesting. You really do get to see this fall of the house of Usher. I think that's kind of cool. You're seeing this literal fall of the house of Usher uh, through this lens. <laughs> I like that. Again, lots of elements really do reference Edgar Allan Poe's work. You you can't read this. If you're a fan of Poe, you're going to be like, oh, that's that. Or, oh, that's that. That's how you're going to read it if you're a fan of Poe's work, because it really does draw a lot of inspiration from his work and it works but it's unique and it, she ties everything together really well you know sometimes they're just small little references like oh these kids here they're they're fixing a clock they're making 
they they get the pendulum to swing in this clock. Um, and I think that that's really cool that there are so many small elements and basically there's this house party at this rundown house. They're going to destroy it. And Trust wants to know what happened to her parents. She wants to know, you know, they're in high school now. Years have passed. They're not friends anymore. Felicity is with the cool kids. Like I said, they live in this really small town. You're either new money or old money. Old money gets more respect than new money, basically. Um, and Felicity is new money. But she's pretty. She's with the popular kids. And she's not really friends with Tress anymore. And it's not entirely her fault. I will say that her mom's a bitch. Pardon my language. Her mother is a monumentally horrible, superficial individual. And I can't stand her. Oh, God, I hate Felicity's mom with, like, a passion. She is just so fixated on appearance is everything. You know, her kid has seizures. So what? That doesn't mean anything, but she's so like, no, no one can know that you have seizures. No, 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 no. No one can know. It is the family shame. That's the kind of person that she is. So she really is part of this wedge between Tress and Felicity, but also Tress, she wants to know what happened to her parents. She wants to know what started her on this path of unfairness because she was just treated like every time she thought she was going to get ahead something with Felicity involving Felicity pulled her back and kept her in the trenches which is why she has this resentment she's like okay you want to talk we'll talk remember this time and then Felicity's like crap crap like, Felicity keeps trying. She's like, no, we're friends. Come on. I'm not a bad person. She's a bad person. She knows she's a bad person. She says it. I am a bad person. She admits to it. Because she is a bad person. But you can't blame her. Like, I, I do want to smack Felicity half the time. I'll say that. But in the end... I don't hate her because it's really her mother. It's her mother. Her mother is just a terrible human being. No wonder her father cheats on her. Oh yeah, no one gets no one gets divorced in this town. No. Appearance. Appearance means everything. Um so that's what I liked with the story. You know, I really did like the characterization. Trust and Felicity, they were like perfect foils for each other. When they were kids, they were like the best of friends, but they balance each other out. And even now as adults with a friendship or relationship as strained as it is, they still find ways to complement each other with the storytelling and with the narrative because there's lots of going back and forth. You know, again, they're at this house party. She knocked Felicity unconscious and now she's, you know, she's got her chained to us she's got her chains like this um in a wall and she's gonna seal her in the wall hmm. another reference to poe <laughs> i loved it i loved it uh, i think i want to read this some more edgar Allan poe when i have time what is this thing called time maybe i'll i'll have some time sooner um but anyway back on topic <laughs> that's what i liked you know, you really do get to see the story develop. You get to see everything that just made Tress the person that she is now. And everything that's really influenced Felicity to be the person she is now. You know, her choice of friends, her choice of clothing. Every decision she makes is because she knows she's not a bad person. I mean, she knows she is a bad person. And she doesn't, she just has luck. You know, sometimes it is just... The luck of the draw, unfortunately. She doesn't even have to try. And she gets things. She's pretty. And kind of smart. 
<laughs> but, you know, it really is a nice developmental of the story. But, you know, there's also another, there's a third. You know, you're going between Felicity Trust, you're going through their memories as they rehash their memories. And the story really is taking you back in time. It does say, you know, the year and this incident. And it reflects on this incident with both of their perspectives. Which I think is good, because you have lots of scope in the storytelling. You've got lots of... I, I, I do love that. I like scope. That's why I tend to like multiple narratives a lot, because you have, like, a wider range and a light, larger scope to build the story. And that's what I think is really good here. But there's a third perspective, and it's the cat. So, again, they have a zoo, right? Uh, the, the panther escapes from the zoo. The very vicious... Panther. See? And these parts are written in verse. So here's an example. You've got cat. And it's written in verse. And guess what? The cat finds her way to the party. Ooh. You have to read the book to enjoy it. It's... It's so well done. It has a lot of thought to it. A lot of neat construction with the storytelling and the narrative. That pacing, it just kept you going and going and going. I read this book in, in a day and a half. And I think it only took me a day and a half because, you know, I do have a 19-month-old son who, there are pictures on Instagram. He kept taking this book from me and he would be, like, going through it. <laughs> um, he would go through it very gently, too. I was very proud of him. So that's why it took me a day and a half because I do have a kid. And I do have a full-time job, unfortunately. So, uh, who am I kidding? I read when I was at work. If it's not busy, I'm reading. <laughs> I'm in the office reading. I'm a manager. I'm allowed to do that. I check out my crew. They got this under control. <laughs> but <laughs> that's me at work. I'm just like, cameras, it's empty. Lobby's empty. Everything's empty. I work at a movie theater, in case you're wondering. It's not busy. And you know what? That benefits me because I get to read. So I read this book really quickly and I remember every little detail about it. It's, it's that good. It's that descriptive. It's that engaging. That rising tension. That climax at the end. So many twists and turns. It just keeps you hooked because of the narrative. Because of the switching of perspectives and going back in time and coming back to the present and I didn't see that happening at the end I was just like what? and you know it's got awesome there's gonna be a book too it's already been announced the last laugh I am here for that um fear is a powerful motivator this was a good book. Highly recommend The Initial Insults by Mindy McGinnis. Personally, I like this cover a little bit more because I feel like it embodies Poe a little bit more. But, you know, the original cover does have... Let me do this properly. The original cover does have a lot of elements that are taken from the story itself. So, I definitely recommend going to the store and getting your own copy of The Initial Insult. I'm going to go ahead and give it five stars. Worthy five stars. Um, was this even a review? I think this was more of just a me, um, ranting and raving about how much I loved this novel. It was good. It was very Poe reminiscent. It was very well done. It was, characterization was spot on. Lots of good tension between them. It was an excellent story. So once again, The Initial Insult by Mindy McGinnis gets five stars. Please check this book out from your local library if money's tight. And if it's not, purchase from your local bookstore or online book retailer. Please avoid Amazon at all costs. And on that note, I hope you all will continue to support me by liking this video, subscribing to my channel, and sharing this with all your book loving friends. There are also other ways you can support me. Uh, you can make a donation on Buy Me A Coffee or purchase one of my very nice smelling candles. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and as always, happy reading.